So today we're going to continue with what we started in the last video. So I have Nebula running and I have my own workstation, Docker machine. So from here I'm going to log in as level 13. The password is level 13. Okay, I'm going to go to home flag 13. Now we have one file or one binary flag 13 whose source code is found here. That's the source code of flag 13. Okay, which is the compiled version you can find here. All right, so we have to find the weakness in this code. It's pretty much straightforward that if we read the first this line, as you can see, the fake ID or the fake UID, which is used here in the if statement is said to be 1000. Now, given that this is a comment, okay, the only way to find or to prove that the fake UID is 1000 is to inspect the binary with GDB debugger. Okay. All right. Nevertheless, nevertheless, let's go back to the description. There is a security check, meaning this check that prevents the program from continuing main plus 48 and then we type c to continue the execution okay another breakpoint here okay so now we reach this point this uh yeah here so we are here the comparison still didn't happen okay so it means that the code has executed all of these instructions and stopped here now we're going to take a look at the dx register As you can see, it is 1014. Now what happens when you resume the execution by typing C, it's going to jump to this instruction. It will compare the value stored in EX with 1000. And since the value stored in EX is not 1000, we're not gonna be able to resume the execution as uh, we want it, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change the value of EX. To 1000 set ex equal 1000 print verify this so it now it equals to 1000 now if we resume the execution start from remaining no we're gonna type c okay as you can see now we were able to print the token gonna copy the token and log to the next level So, so flag, um, let me guess. So here it is level 13. I'm gonna, yeah, so flag 13. The password is the token we found. Get flag, and now we pass this level. Okay, level 14. The program resides in the home flag 14 encrypts. This is about cryptography and it doesn't have to do with privilege escalation. So I'm going to skip it to level 15. So in level 15, we're going to use trace. So now let's log into level 15. So level 15. Level. So level 15 level 15 okay all right see the home flag 15. we have one binary flag 15. we're gonna stress the binary stress is a tool in linux that's used for debugging and troubleshooting programs it displays the all all the system calls along with the arguments including all the files and directories that are called so for now we're gonna stress the binary flag 15 as instructed all right, let's take a look here. So we see these calls that the program makes. It uses access, open, stat64 to perform system calls. Since the purpose of trace tool is to troubleshoot and debug the program, we have to take a look at the errors here. So the errors dictate or indicate that there are calls to non 
existent files, including a shared library file and another file. If you go back to the description here and read the hint, you may wish to review how to compile a shared library in Linux and how the libraries are loaded and processed by reviewing the DL open man page in depth. Clean up after yourself. All right. So how to take this, exploit this to our advantage? We see here that there is a call to a shared library located, supposed to be located at this directory. But unfortunately, the program cannot find it. We can verify this hypothesis by go, going to uh, our ls-la var temp flag 15. And indeed, yeah, these ones I created, never mind these, but if you try to list the contents of this directory, you're going to see it's empty. Hence, you see the error, no such file or directory. When the program tries to perform a system call or open to open the shared library. So to exploit this or advantage, we're going to have to create our own shared library that spawns maybe a new shell as the calling process or the calling user ID. Okay, we're going to have to create the shared library and place it exactly under VAR temp flag 15. Okay, so that when flag 15 is run again, it's going to run our own version, much like when you exploit an environment variable uh, weakness. You put your own version of the program in the environment path. The same way here, we're going to create our own version of the shared library and place it in this directory so that it precedes the assumed version in the uh, uh, displayed error here. Okay, so how to do that? First, we create a file. Okay, named test. So it has this code. Okay, we're gonna have to cd to temp or vr temp flag 15 cat test.c. So this is an assumed code that spawns a new shell. Okay, we're gonna have to compile this as a shared library. Before we do that, we're gonna have to create a version file for this. The version file has the following content 2.0 and the last thing you want to do is to compile both both the c code and the version to do that let me show you how i did this we're gonna type shared here shared yeah this is the command using gcc we have to be careful here because we want the name to be as exactly stated in the program here. It's, it has to be library c.so. Paste this. Let me copy one more time. Okay, dash O here needs to be libc.so.s.6. Okay, I'm not going to execute this command because I have already done this. Now we have the shared file already under VR temp flag 15. We can now go to home flag 15 and execute this file flag 15. Once we execute, as you can see, we have a new shell ID, and it is the level 15. If we get flag, it's going to execute successfully. So now we have escalated the privileges without any problem. Going back here, level 16, level 16 doesn't work because assumingly this code is listening on port 1616, but uh, if you try to use the get or maybe connect to the machine on port 1616 as you can see we receive no uh you know output level 17 it is about python pickle and we actually did around two videos about how to exploit uh, the python pickle level 19 it's a broken 18 sorry 
Level 19, it is actually a good one, but I don't think it's practical and realistic these days because it realize. let's go over the code here and let me tell you why. So here, this is the code where it actually make it, it makes a check on the parent user ID here, this line, this line, sorry. Okay, and then when the parent PID, okay, is equal to zero, it's going to give you a shell. So the only way to retrieve a shell as root is to have the process, the parent PID as root. But since you don't own the parent process, you're not going to be able to do this. There is only one way to do that is to create your own child process, okay, using fork and then kill the child process. Or the kill, kill the parent process. The child process, when it is without a parent process, it's going to be attached to the initialize uh, process, and therefore you will be able to run it as root. Try it yourself and give me your feedback in the video description. So that was it, guys.